Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your patience. You've joined Yelp's first quarter earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session, and instructions will be given at that time. Should you require any additional assistance during the call, please press star, then zero on your touchtone telephone. As a reminder, this conference may be recorded. I would now like to turn the call over to your host, Head of Investor Relations, Ronald Clark. Sir, you may begin. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Yelp's first quarter earnings conference call. Joining me today are Yelp's CEO, Jeremy Stoppelman, CFO, Lanny Baker, and COO, Jed Nachman. Before we begin, I'll read our safe harbor statement. We'll make certain statements today that are forward-looking and involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Please note that these forward-looking statements reflect our opinions only as of the date of this call, and we undertake no obligation to revise or publicly release the results of any revision to these forward-looking statements in light of new information or future events. In addition, we are subject to a number of risks that may significantly impact our business and financial results. Please refer to our SEC filings as well as our shareholder letter for a more detailed description of risk factors that may affect our results. During our call today, we'll discuss adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin, which are non-GAAP financial measures. In our shareholder letter released this afternoon and our filings with the SEC, each of which is posted on our website, you will find additional disclosures regarding these non-GAAP financial measures, as well as historical reconciliations of GAAP net income to adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin. And with that, I'll turn the call over to Jeremy. Thanks, Ron, and welcome everyone to Yelp's first quarter earnings conference call. As we discussed with you in February, Yelp has begun undertaking a series of important business transitions designed to accelerate growth, drive stronger profitability, and create shareholder value. We're encouraged by the progress we made in the first quarter. Our new business products are resonating with customers, we captured more of the national opportunity, and approaching the end of the quarter, we began to drive significantly more value to our advertisers. We are pleased to share more detail on the progress we outlined in our shareholder letter, as well as provide you with some additional color on our first quarter results, which were consistent with our business outlook. We expect these early wins, along with our continued focus on our 2019 initiatives to accelerate revenue growth. Accordingly, we are reaffirming our business outlook for the full year. As we look ahead to the next five years, our plan is to make Yelp stronger and more valuable by increasing our focus on serving the needs of advertisers and business owners leveraging product and marketing alongside sales to enhance our go-to-market strategy, and delivering a mid-teens percentage compound annual revenue growth rate coupled with consistent margin expansion and disciplined capital management. Our first quarter results reflect several of the benefits of our focused execution, and at the same time, we're still in the early days of a significant business transition. We anticipate that the full benefit of the work we are doing today won't be measured in this quarter or the next one, but rather will play out over the next several years to return Yelp to to strong revenue growth with a more leveraged and profitable business model. Now I'll turn it over to Lanny to touch on the key points for the quarter, and then we'll open the call to your questions. Thank you, Jeremy. Total revenue grew 6% year-to-year in the first quarter, led by healthy growth in our multi-location and national businesses. These are an area of strategic priority where we believe Yelp is, remains very underpenetrated. Net income in the second quarter was $1 million, or $0.02 cents per share. Demonstrating once again the operating leverage in Yelp's business model, we delivered 50% of the first quarter revenue growth down to the adjusted EBITDA line, with adjusted EBITDA margins rising two percentage points year-to-year in the first quarter. During the first quarter, we, re- we repurchased $102 million in Yelp stock, And as of last night, we've bought back a total of $205 million year-to-date, or 5.7 million shares, reducing the fully diluted share count by approximately 6% since the start of 2019. Looking ahead to the rest of the year, we're reaffirming our full-year business outlook for 8 to 10% revenue growth over 2018, and 2 to 3 percentage points of adjusted EBITDA margin expansion versus last year. Our second quarter business outlook anticipates higher revenue in the current quarter than in the first quarter of 2019, with year-over-year revenue growth in the range of 4 to 6% compared to the second quarter of 2018. We also expect adjusted EBITDA margins to rise from the first quarter to the second quarter, 
with 2019 adjusted EBITDA margins anticipated to be even with to one percentage point higher than what we reported in the second quarter of 2018. Within our outlook for both the second quarter and the full year, we've reflected current business trends as well as some anticipated impact from the efforts and initiatives begun last year and which we advanced during the first quarter. Specifically, we anticipate stronger second half revenue growth based on at least three key priorities, and these are areas in which we've already seen early signs of progress. First, we believe revenue growth in the multi-location and national advertising business will remain strong and gather momentum in the second half based on the expansion of our sales force, the introduction of new products, and winning new customers and growing revenue from existing customers. Second, the introduction of new revenue-generating business owner products and effective marketing and development of those we've already launched is expected to add to growth across the remainder of 2019. Third, we anticipate that our efforts to enhance the control, service, and value delivered to advertising customers, headlined by a significant increase in leads delivered and matched with reduced CPC prices, will increase customer satisfaction and improve revenue retention as we progress throughout the year. With that, let's turn the call over to questions. Thank you, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press star then one on your touchtone telephone. If your question has been answered or you wish to remove yourself from the queue, please press the pound key. Again, that's star one in your touchtone telephone to ask a question. To prevent any background noise, we ask that you please place your line on mute once your question has been stated. We ask that you please restrict yourself to one question and one follow-up, then requeue. Our first question comes from the line of Shweta Kajuria of RBC Capital Markets. Your line is open. Great. Thank you. Two questions, please. On product expansion, verified licenses, that's up to 5000 from 3000 and I believe now um, you have another product. So how deep is your new product offering pipeline today, and have you been testing some of the new products already that you've not launched? Uh, could you talk a little bit about that as, uh, for the rest of the for the rest of the year. And then second, in home and local, you plan to double the number of leads to paid advertisers this year. What are you doing differently on the platform to drive this growth? Five million leads in Q1, up 50% revenue from our uh, requested quote. Thank you. Hi, Shwasa. This is Jeremy. I'll take uh, your question here. So the first thing we did on the product side was, you know, improve the ad units, better merchandising, better targeting, uh, which we saw a lot of success with driving more clicks uh, and lowering prices, lowering CPCs. So that was a, a great win for our advertisers, drove them more value. Uh, you know, starting kind of midway, we really started to see the impacts midway through the quarter. We also, as you uh, mentioned, have, you know, seen some success, early success with Verify, uh, verified licensing for businesses that have a, a licensing regime. They can showcase that now on their business profile and in search results, and we've seen really healthy uptake there. continues uh, to be a bright spot. And then, you know, more recently, we just started uh, rolling out business highlights, so highlighting different characteristics of your business, you know, how many years you've been open, uh, whether you do offer free quotes and, and things like that. Uh, and that's seeing, uh, you know, really healthy early signs, but, uh, you know, just launched, uh, you know, as we closed out the quarter, as we started uh, Q2. Um, you know, on the national side, we also have a new product offering that started uh, to be out in the wild, which is limited time offers. And, uh, you know, we're seeing a strong market response, uh, you know, from the national enterprise segment. That's something that we knew that they wanted. Uh, you know, we got close to the customer, and they were telling us that they have seasonal campaigns and things, and they would like a way to showcase that on Yelp. And uh, so we were able to provide a, a product specifically tailored, uh, tailored to help them with that. And then your second question was on home and local, talking about leads and how are we going to drive more leads to our advertisers. And, you know, some of that has already really begun. I think we were up uh, over 60% in leads driven uh, to advertisers. And a big opportunity there is we have a lot of, or, you know, what we call organic leads flowing through the system, and we have a big opportunity to uh, channel those more towards our paying advertisers, and that's through things like ad units and better merchandising and new ad placements and so forth. And so, you know, we've taken some real impactful first steps, uh, but we have a whole lot of uh, additional features and launches that will be coming throughout the year. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Our next question comes from Michael Ng of Goldman Sachs. Your line is open. 
Great. Thank you for the question. Uh, it was encouraging to see the progress on national accounts in the quarter, um, you know, winning some of the new mandates and budget increases from some of the advertisers. Um, I was just wondering if you could give us a few more details about some of these uh, new wins and if there's any way to uh, quantify the contribution to uh, revenue growth from these national accounts throughout the rest of the year. Um, and secondly, could you just talk about your confidence level in the revenue growth accelerating in the back half? Thanks. Sure. Uh, Michael, I can take the first one. This is Jed. You know, um, we, we had a strong quarter um, in, in, in Q1. Um, you know, in the fourth quarter, we actually signed a bunch of new national advertisers. Uh, some of those programs were seasonal or short-term in nature. Um, and, you know, we're starting to get more seasonal in that business. And, and uh you know, the beginning of the year tends to be a little bit of a seasonal lull, so we're actually really encouraged uh, by the back half of the year. Um, uh, we certainly contemplated that rate um, in our outlook for the quarter. We see uh, several encouraging signs as we enter into a stronger spending season. You know, 50% revenue growth in our top 100 accounts. About half of that growth came from existing customers, which is a, which is a good sign, and half from new customers. Um, you know, as Jeremy mentioned, the LTO product is just kind of getting out into the wild right now and has had strong initial response. Um, and, and really, you know, we've grown that team by uh, 30% year over year. Um, um, and are starting to have the real conversations that we have to, you know, we're a real viable uh, option uh, based on the other competitors out there very, very far down the funnel in the eyes of national advertisers, um, you know, with a lot of intent-driven uh, consumers out there looking at Yelp. So we're, we're um, encouraged by what we're seeing on the national business and uh, look forward to the rest of the year. Uh, and then your, your, your second question was about uh, sort of the, the shape of the year, our confidence level, various drivers and the like. Um, you know, in the first quarter, the, from a revenue growth perspective, the enterprise business was a, was, and the national accounts were a really important driver. Uh, very strong growth in that category, uh, as Jed just described. And as we look across the rest of the year, between the Salesforce expansion, uh, the products that we have that go, you know, there's some attribution things that we continue to do beyond the limited time offer. We, we feel like we've got a very strong product slate that's going to allow us to continue to get uh, good advertiser response, uh, both new accounts and then growing the accounts that we have. Um, we are in the middle of a transition year. We've described it that way. Uh, and uh, after the end of the first quarter, we've seen progress in many of the key areas that we prioritized for this year. Uh, be that self-service, new products, customer retention, lowering CPCs, enterprise growth. Um, and those are all the formulation that go into our full year outlook. So uh, we're reaffirming that outlook today, uh, and uh, we're, we're very focused on achieving the goals we've set out. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Mark May of City. Your line is open. Thank you, um, and I apologize if these have been asked already, but maybe two quick ones, kind of housekeeping. Um, notice that I believe ad clicks in total um, grew faster than advertising revenue. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if that's the case, maybe if you could share a little bit of what um, uh, causes that to occur. And then secondly, in terms of some of the new products that you're rolling out, uh, verified license, business highlights, and it sounds like more to come, uh, are, are these uh, – do you have to be an existing um, advertiser to purchase those products, or um, if not, you know, are, are those uh, – what's sort of the strategy around? Is that meant to kind of uh, allow a, a sort of a, a little bit of a lower-priced uh, entry level and then to upsell? Just kind of curious about how you're selling those products and the strategy behind that. Thanks. Sure. I'll talk first about the uh, revenue and the ad clicks uh, and what's going on there. You're right. Ad clicks grew faster than advertising revenue in this quarter. Um, and as we've said and as Jeremy talked about earlier, a big focus for us has been to increase the value that we're delivering to our paying customers. Um, and as we do that, we're driving more of – by improving the ad units, by improving their efficacy, by improving the way they stand out within search results – by giving advertisers more control over the way that those ads look and where they show, uh, we are able to drive an increasing volume of our consumer activity to our paid advertisers. Um, and effectively, what that does is it reduces the – improves their gas mileage. Per dollar spent, they get more advertising results. It reduces the cost per click. 
Um, and we, we know and we believe that will continue to contribute to advertiser satisfaction and ultimately to advertiser retention rates. So there's very purposeful activity there to increase the ad volume delivered to our customers. Um, and that's, that's kind of what's behind that dynamic. Hi, Mark. This is Jeremy. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Verify and our profile product strategy there. Uh, you were asking, you know, is this, uh, you know, do you have to be an existing advertiser buying CPC to purchase this product? Uh, the answer is no. And, and so we do see a mix of both existing as well as new advertisers. You know, one of the ideas behind this product was, you know, looking at, at our overall offering, we didn't have something that was really at the entry level. So, you know, most of our efforts were focused on getting you as an advertiser potential advertiser to spend, you know, three, four hundred dollars with us. And so we thought, you know, it was worth exploring some, uh, you know, entry level options. And this is, uh, you know, essentially our first foray. And, you know, it's getting a really strong reception from, you know, both the, the big spenders, the ones that are spending 400 plus with us. Uh, and in fact, we do see some improved retention characteristics when they pick up the product. So it does seem to make them more committed but then we're also seeing a healthy mix of new ad, you know, new spenders uh, that maybe wouldn't have bought from us before or are just dipping their toe in and exploring it. And we do think there's opportunity to experiment there with, you know, selling, starting with, uh, you know, some of these new customers that come, are coming in on Verified and then upselling them uh, later. We do have a client services team and um, a local client partners team that, that is really focused on uh, upselling and, and providing extra value to our advertisers. So we see, you know, additional opportunities and experimentation there. One other, one other key element of the strategy around the, the products is really how they, how they dovetail with self-serve. I don't want people to miss that. Uh, Verified License, half of the customers that are currently subscribing to Verified License were self-serve buyers of the product. Um, and that we believe that lower price point, uh, based on our market research, competitive analysis, customer feedback, uh, we believe that these lower price products are going to be an important uh, sort of ignition point for our self-serve product and, and channel over time. Thanks. That's helpful. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Justin Patterson of Raymond James. Your line is open. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to dig into home and local a little bit. Um, we're seeing a lot more interest in on-demand uh, products and companies moving from high up the funnel leads to giving service providers leads that are ready to book today. Uh, from that perspective, how do you think about the ability of request a quote to deliver um, customers very ready to transact to more of your service providers. Are there any more product developments or changes in traffic acquisition you need to make? Thank you. Hi, Justin. This is Jeremy. Um, you know, certainly in, in specific categories, there can be, you know, emergency services or something that you want uh, right away. Like you can imagine if you, you know, cracked your iPhone screen, you, you want to get that replaced sooner rather than later. And there are actually mobile services that will come uh, right to you. So request a quote does handle those types of offerings. Uh, and we do provide response times. And so that can help consumers uh, get what they're looking for uh, really quickly. But I think there is product opportunity to go even deeper and make it, you know, even more responsive. And so we'll continue to chip away at that and explore. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes from Lloyd Walmsley of Deutsche Bank. Your question, please. Hi, this is uh, Chris on for Lloyd. Uh, maybe a few if I can. Um, just maybe a uh, quick one to piggyback on uh, uh, what Mark had asked. Uh, are advertisers that are just using the likes of uh, business highlights, verified license, or the limited time offer, are they being included in the PAA number or the paid local number? And uh, if so, how many uh, advertisers were just using those products? And then um, maybe one on the national for us. Um, just curious, how are you thinking about the vertical makeup um, on a go-forward basis of your top 100 advertisers? Thanks. Sure thing. Uh, yes, the verified license customers, biz highlight customers, and other new products that we're rolling out will be included in our paying advertising account, paying advertising location statistics. Um, as we roll those services out, they are promoted within the claim flow. As I talked about the importance of these products from a self-serve perspective, they are promoted within the business owner account. Um, and we've had strong uptake from both new customers, brand new to Yelp, as well as uh, existing customers saying, oh, that's a nice feature, that's a nice upgrade, I'm going to add it to the package that I already have. So the, the 5,000 customers that we have on verified license today are a combination of brand new customers 
who are only buying that, brand new customers who are buying that, and also upgraded to advertising at the same time uh, or shortly thereafter, as well as existing advertisers who have bought the verified verified uh, products. So all these things will be in the count, and they are today. Um, the the 5,000 accounts relative to the grand total of 193,000 advertising accounts that we have, um, there's not a huge impact from the net brand new uh, verified license only within that number yet, uh, though over time uh, our belief is that those low price, low price products are important for getting us to a wider distribution in the marketplace. Um, on the national front, sure. Uh, you know, in, in terms of verticals that we're going after, I'd say that the, the major focus is on restaurant and retail. Um, you know, uh, the, the limited time offer specifically for restaurants and, you know, we're going to continue to kind of work on that product for the retail sector as well um, is really resonates. You see a lot of these national clients going through, um, you know, one, two, three month campaigns where they want to promote a specific menu item or a specific deal, all you can eat uh, buffet at, at Olive Garden. Um, and so, um, you know, we really think uh, restaurants are a, a great place to, to focus and also should be noted that our attribution um, studies that we do with third parties as well as our own first party data um, works really well in high volume categories where obviously people are walking into stores. Um, and so uh, you see a, a big focus on restaurant and retail. That being said, we have a nice services uh, national business as well um, and, uh, you know, less on the limited time offer side, uh, but, the, you know, they find a lot of value in the request to quote product as well. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone telephone. Again, that's star one, your touchtone telephone, to ask a question. To remove yourself from the queue, you can press the pound key. Again, that's star one, to ask a question. Our next question comes from the line of Tom Champion of Cohen. Your line is open. Uh, th thanks, guys. It's Henry on for Tom. How do you feel about Salesforce productivity so far this year, and um, what, what steps are you taking to increase it? And also curious if you could talk about how your cost savings initiatives are tracking. Sure, I'll take the uh, the first one, Henry, in terms of uh, Salesforce productivity. Now, the, the bottom line is at the top of the funnel, we feel really healthy right now. Um, you know, oftentimes when people are calculating, you know, Salesforce productivity, they're looking at some sort of combination of net revenue and additions, which doesn't really accurately reflect kind of sales productivity. Um, you know, we were uh, encouraged with the gross account additions driven by the Salesforce in Q1. That number was stronger than the prior two quarters, uh, and metrics like deals per rep were right, right in line with, with our targets. You know, the, a lot of the action on the productivity side, which doesn't actually have to do with salespeople, is on the retention side. And so uh, we're still feeling some of the effects of the transition to non-term contracts and short term customer retention is lower than it was a year ago, and that's, you know, that's what's kind of impacting the overall productivity number. Uh, but as we mentioned previously, we're, you know, keenly focused on delivering more value to our customers and driving more product into the channel uh, with, the, with the intended effect of improving the retention side of the equation. But, you know, our, our top of the funnel is as healthy as it's ever been. And, Henry, on the, with respect to cost savings, um, the, uh, we're, we're, we have a plan there that uh, is proceeding on pace and on plan. Um, you know, a couple of the highlights that we've called out right now that we'll talk about are we've sublet a portion of our space in San Francisco, uh, releasing three floors today with plans to let a, more space in our San Francisco uh, facilities go as we progress throughout the year. Uh, it's obviously a very high cost. Uh, rental market, and we're, uh, as we move some of our sales resources into other offices, that allows us to get some savings we've talked about. Um, another area where we've found some pretty compelling both savings and sort of strategic benefit is that as we add more only on Yelp product features to the mobile app, such as reservations and wait list, um, we're finding a nice flywheel of users and locations driving mobile app user growth. Uh, this has allowed us to back off on some of the customer acquisition spending that we might have done previously to propel user growth. Um, 
So uh, those are those are an area I believe in the first quarter we reduced our marketing spending by four or five million dollars relative to a year ago, um, even while seeing acceleration in mobile app users. Uh, so that that strategy on restaurants to, to be a source of our user growth really is making a company healthier and stronger, more profitable going forward. So we're on track on the cost savings. I appreciate your question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Samit Sinha of B. Riley, FBR. Your question, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, on the CPC question, uh, it's you decided to add more value to what your advertisers are paying you for now. The question is, uh, did you have to reduce prices, or is it automated? Or by reducing prices also mean did you have to remove the floors on certain CPCs, or is this an automated process so uh, it worked out that way? It's just the result. And secondly, on uh, request a quote, uh, you know, if I'm looking at the numbers, it seems like annualized revenue. Uh, came up at about 50% year over year. Uh, how much of that is also dependent on the CPC uh, slowdown? Thank you. Um, so on your first question, this is Jeremy, around CPC pricing. It is a largely automated uh, system. We did you know, improve the effectiveness as well as uh, number of ad placements. And so that you know, has an effect on inventory, which drives down CPC pricing. That's pretty much the, the main driver of why you know, value went up and, and pricing as a result uh, went down. And then on request to quote, yeah, and request to quote, yes, you're right. You have the numbers right in terms of the attributable revenue growth and the things that we're doing to improve the delivery of request to quote consumers to paying advertisers has the same effect that Jeremy just described. And so as we drive more value, i.e. more leads per dollar spent, uh, it does uh, reduce CPCs uh, in the near term, and we think improved customer satisfaction and retention in the intermediate and longer term. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Elliot Alper of DA Davidson. The line is open. Thanks for the question. So with data privacy becoming a hot topic, uh, could you remind us about your policies and strategy when it comes to collecting and using customer data on your platform? Thanks. Yeah, this is Jeremy. I mean, we obviously take data privacy very seriously. Um, you know, I, I think we're not – collecting the amount of data that a Facebook or Google has, so we're not really, you know, in the heart of the bullseye. Um, we don't sell off our data to third parties or anything like that. Um, when we're talking about things like attribution, which can be more sensitive, uh, you know, we have first-party data we collect ourselves. Uh, we work with other third parties uh, that do their own data collection, but we, uh, you know, are, are very careful and thoughtful about uh, user privacy. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Victor Anthony of Aegis Capital. The line is open. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for putting me on. Uh, just a question on the partnership um, paragraph in the shareholder letter. Um, you guys are stating that you're um, open to pursuing effective partnerships. There's a company, um, Angie's Home Services, who said that you know they are open to some sort of commercial relationship with you guys. So um, you're open to partnerships. They're open to uh, partnerships with you. You know, what's holding you guys back? You know, it seems like kind of a win-win situation. Thanks. Well, thanks, Victor. Um, you know, as we've said in the past, as we look at the partnerships, we're really looking at sort of a two-gate process. One, does the partner enhance the customer experience that we have? And two, does the partner offer to our shareholders better economics than we can generate on our own. We're still fairly early in the development of the home services category. It's growing as fast as some of them, if not faster, than some of the apparent current leaders in the marketplace. Uh, and we've got a lot of new product coming uh, for that area. It's a, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about the growth we've seen in reviewed businesses are growing at a team's rate in the home and local category year over year. And then the number of reviews per business are growing at an even faster rate. So our depth, breadth, and coverage of this category continues to only get stronger. Uh, we're open to partnerships. We've still got, uh, we're always weighing that build versus buy versus, versus partner uh, equation that most companies do. And at the moment, we're very committed to building our business and we're always open to partnership ideas. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the Q&A session and today's conference. Thank you for your participation and have a wonderful day. You may disconnect your lines at this time.